Thick City just got a little bit thicker. Let's talk about Games Workshop's new rules for a Drakari army focusing around the Homunculus Covens. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Drukhari, and I thought we'd take a quick look at the new formation in which you can run a pure Homunculus Covens force, and get access to a whole load of additional rules and stratagems. The Covens have had their fortunes wax and wane over the course of the last year. After the incredibly strong Drukhari Codex dropped, Dark Technomancer Liquefier spam was all the rage, The Games Workshop quickly nerfed that combo on the vast majority of units. Then for the most part, Covens tended to be a minority part of most Drukhari lists, while a lot of the witches, cabals, and blades for higher things tended to be a bit on the stronger side. But then, basically, when that stuff was all nerfed, and they got some nice points cuts for their grotesques and talos, the Thick City Homunculus Coven build took force, using minus one damage as the custom coven, on top of all their big and meaty defensive e profiles. Finally, that was toned down, with Talos and Kronos losing core, and then that custom coven only applying to attacks that are strength 7 or lower. I'd argue leaving most of the coven's units still in a fairly good place, in particular, I think that racks are one of the stronger units in the whole book. Really tough objective secure bodies, a little bit of melee, and if you wanted to just spam them and play objectives, then that isn't actually the worst build in the world. It kind of makes an army of renown that's focused around the covens into potentially quite a powerful thing, and that's exactly what Drakari have received in Warzone Nakmund Rift War. The new rules are basically exactly that. The formation is called the Coteries of the Homunculi, this appears to be what happens when the homunculi covens set out to raid on the forces in real space all by themselves, presumably off to acquire a whole load of interesting new flesh specimens to drag back to their twisted laboratories. As seems to be the standard with armies of renown these days, there are a fair few slightly punishing restrictions to allow you to gain access to the benefits, the biggest one perhaps being that you can only take homunculus covens units and blades for hire, you can't take anything that's cabals or witches. As one of Drukhari's main strengths is being able to soup the three different aspects of their faction with near impunity, that is a fairly punishing thing. You lose plenty of decent unit options there, including souped up Archons and Succubi as very fighty characters. You can't bring along Gun Platform Ravagers and their planes, nor the Witch Helions, the Cabalite Trueborn, or the Court of the Archon. Allowing Blades for Hire though still does give you a decent amount of options, you can still bring along Incubi and Drizar and you can still mix in some deep striking scourges for fire support and stuff. It's definitely a big trade-off though, you are leaving a fair few options on the shelf. Otherwise, your warlord must be a homunculus, so you can't make it Drizar, for example, to gain access to his rerolls. And although you get to keep the keyword for your given homunculus coven, you must swap the actual obsession for the driven by fear rule down below. So I think you'd still be able to make use of your coven-specific warlord trait, relic, and stratagem. So I think you could still take the Vexator Mask that fights last from Prophets of Flesh, or the Warlord Traits to allow you to give the chance of stripping Obsec from the Dark Creed. In return for giving up these options, you get access to three Warlord Trait options and four Relics. Quite nice choices to flesh out the rather limited amount that you'd have just sticking to the Coven stuff. Eight Stratagems, plenty of which seem to be aimed at making your units a lot more fighty. And then in place of that Drukhari Obsession, aka Chapter Tactic, you get this benefit called Driven by Fear. Basically, this one seems to make your unit harder to kill after you've taken more casualties, basically increasing their 5 plus feel no pain to a 4 plus feel no pain, but this only happens when your unit is less than half strength, when they're actually selected for the target of an attack. I believe that that means that if you shot the unit and managed to wipe it out all in one go, then I feel like this rule wouldn't actually trigger, as it only goes off when your unit actually is selected as the target of an attack, and if that happens all at once, then it could die without you ever getting the 4 plus fail no pain. I guess it means if you just do have a couple of racks or a single grotesque clinging on to life, then I guess being extra hard to put down isn't the worst thing ever. I think it might trigger a little bit more easily against mortal wounds, as they're sort of resolved one by one, so I think that this would trigger from a whole bunch of mortal wounds as soon as the squad went down to half health. So it actually is a bit more better protection against them if you're about to get obliterated in the psychic phase maybe. Overall, it's useful, but doesn't really feel all that reliable. The other half of the obsession is that they can also fall back and charge. Always handy to have around, though you can do this for a couple of command points anyway, and a lot of the time it isn't going to be so important that you're going to want to fall back and charge with a whole ton of different units across the map. So again, this doesn't really feel like an amazing, unique selling point. I think that both halves of the obsession are pretty handy, but for me, the main reasons to actually play this formation would be in the Warlord Traits, Relics, and Stratagems. 
I guess in particular this obsession though does incentivize you to run big units of racks, grotesques and talos, and interestingly could be a little bit more powerful on odd number size units. Say for example if you had four grotesques the rule would only trigger when you had one grotesque left, but if you had five grotesques it would trigger when you had two. Moving on into the character upgrades, there's a trio of different warlord traits. The first one's calculating gaze, which doesn't seem like the worst pickup. You get to re-roll hit rolls of one for core units within six inches. Unfortunately, a fair amount of the buffs do centre around core units, which now, due to the balanced data slate, would only be grotesques and racks. It's not too bad, and it'll certainly amp up their damage output. I guess could be worse if you got a homunculus going forward supporting those units. Schema Supreme is a command point generating one. When your opponent spends a command point, generate one yourself on a 5+. plus. Really quite reasonable to have that one bought in somewhere in your army. If you can keep a homunculus safe for most of the game, that's usually going to be a worthwhile investment. More command points equals more powerful abilities. And then finally, Artist of Dark Alchemy allows one core unit to re-roll the number of attacks from random number of shot weapons. You seem to be able to pick that unit in the shooting phase or when firing Overwatch. I guess that's going to be maximally powerful on a unit of grotesques with liquefy guns. As it's core locked, it's unfortunately not going to work on Talos or Kronos, though that will be quite good. In general though, even if you do manage to get this off on, say, a unit of 5 grotesques, you'd only be averaging around about 4 extra hits out of it. And for me, I'm not really sure whether or not the upgrade to liquefy guns is even worth giving up those monstrous cleavers for, which are very nice general purpose combat weapons. Overall though, I think out of these, the first two are kind of useful. Then we get into relics, the first one is the Transfuser of Excruciation, a fairly awesomely named Icor Injector, one that does a mortal wound in combat, and then if you do manage to sting a enemy non-vehicle with this, then they get minus one ballistic skill, weapon skill and strength for the entire rest of the game. That could be seriously quite annoying on the wrong unit, I guess ideally if you could get that off on something like a big unit of Terminators, and have their damage output just drastically reduced for the rest of the time that you play. I guess the only downside is having the homunculus mixed up in combat, which I guess some of the time they will be okay to be, but otherwise they might want to be a bit careful. The next one is the Stinger Engorger Pistol. This is a Stinger Pistol that usually just has the one shot and wounds on twos, but this one gets five shots. And if the enemy manages to lose a wound against this thing, until the end of your turn, all the rest of your attacks are improved by AP-1 against the unit, which again, I suppose could be handy against the right target, particularly with relatively low AP attacks, like say those grotesque cleavers or the Rax poison blades. Again, perhaps not terrible, the gun upgrade on its own could actually be fairly decent against light infantry, but it does seem a little bit random to me as to whether or not you're actually going to be able to punch through that wound against high armor save foes. There's a pretty reasonable chance of it doing nothing against the targets that you really want that AP debuff against. Next you've got the Mask of Torment, one enemy unit within 12 inches in the morale phase becomes a casual minus 4 leadership more than normal. GW seems to be fairly happy to throw around these fairly potent leadership debuffs these days. When that matters, that will genuinely be quite annoying. It might force the opponent to auto-pass for 2 CP, or potentially lose an extra model or two. I think it's still always just a little bit risky to be taking leadership debuff relics though. Against some armies it'll matter quite a lot, against some it really won't. If you do want to play leadership shenanigans though, then that seems like an excellent tool. Just combine that with grizzly trophies on a raider or something, and you've got a minus 6 leadership debuff on one enemy unit. Finally, there's a relic called the Biotargeting Orb. You've got to select one enemy non-vehicle unit in the first battle round, and then any core and character models within 6 inches of the bearer get plus 1 to hit against that target. Again, that's the rest of the buffs that only applies to the homunculus units. You can't use it on blades for hire. A fairly powerful boost when it goes off. But unless you're running a whole load of small units of racks with ranged weapons, it's largely going to be a combat buff. So it does sort of depend on getting your character alongside a bunch of core units into combat with that unit, which might or might not be easy to achieve depending on how the opponent moves. Overall, i describe these as okay. The main Drukhari Codex is maybe a bit lacking in terms of relic options, so I guess it certainly doesn't hurt to have a few more that you might be able to apply to your homunculi. I still think that perhaps the Animus Vitae and the Helm of Spite are going to be equally or more popular ones, but I feel that each of these four are at least fairly usable. The Stinger one does give you a little bit more shooting, the Torment one will apply leadership tests better, and that Transfuser and Biotargeting Orb probably give you the most powerful buffs, but it may be just a little bit clunky to try and get them to work best. Overall, I'd say usable, though not enormously standout. Finally, we get on to the 8 stratagems for the army. 
where a fair amount of these seem to be aimed to amp up your melee combat, and there's actually a surprising amount of pre-game abilities as well. First up for pre-game abilities, there's Rule Through Fear. This one allows you to select one homunculus model, and they get plus 3 inches to their aura abilities, and plus 3 inches to their command phase abilities. That would be 9 inches for their plus 1 toughness rule, and sorry, only 6 inches for their fleshcraft healing rule. Seems broadly useful, I think combining that with the reroll ones to hit as well could be pretty nice. For 1 CP, there's the Art of Poisonry, a pre-game ability that turns 1 unit's 4 plus poison weapons into 3 plus poison weapons. Again, this has to apply to a core unit, so you can't use it on Venoms or anything. It seems that this one will be best used on racks. Maybe this might be best on a really big unit of 20 or something. One that you're planning on buffing further and want to make hit extra hard in combat. For 1 CP, we have Brutal Vivisection. This one happens when you kill an enemy model in the fight phase, and the next time that enemy unit is selected to fight, until the end of the phase, each time their model makes an attack, you subtract 1 from the attack's wound roll. If you're fighting against a fairly dangerous combat foe, then for one command point, that's actually a really powerful debuff. If you can make sure that you strike first, maybe have fights last from that Vexator mask or some Incubi perhaps. If you can have a grotesque or rack unit kill at least one model, then they're not going to be doing all that much damage to you in return, particularly when you take into account your units might have extra toughness already due to a homunculi being nearby. In a fairly close combat, that's going to be a massive game changer. For one CP, we have Visions of Butchery. This one's a pretty powerful one for flipping objectives, potentially. At the end of your charge phase, you roll a dice, and on a 2+, one of the enemy units in combat with you loses the objective secured rule until your next charge phase. It means that if you throw a big unit of racks into combat with something, and they're fighting over an objective, it basically means that you're going to win that objective, until they can eventually scrape off your big unit of very tough flesh creations. In the game of trading command points into victory points, that one's a really nice one, I think particularly if you can apply it to something that's got objective secured, but it's so tough that you're probably not just going to be able to remove it outright. For 1 CP, we have Mercies of the Homunculus. This one's a defensive buff to one of your Homunculus Coven units. If you manage to destroy an enemy unit in the fight phase, then your unit just gains that 4 plus feel no pain for the rest of the battle. They don't need to be below half strength to be able to use it. This one isn't core locked or anything like that, so you could potentially use it on a big unit of Talos, taking out something trivial. I feel like this is another genuinely quite powerful one. It equates to around about a 33% increase in durability compared with what you had before. Provided you've got a fairly big meaty unit using this, this one's pretty much an auto use whenever you can trigger it. For 1 CP, there's another pre-game one in Wealth and Power. You have to apply this to a core unit, and for your 1 CP, it gives all their ranged weapons plus 1 strength. This would be pretty amazing on something like Talos or Kronos, but they're locked out of it because they don't have core. So I guess if you really want to get the maximum value out of this one, it will be grotesque with liquefier guns. Maybe even potentially doing that combo with the Warlord to re-roll number of shots if you wanted. I guess they could pack a bit more of a punch if they're all hitting at strength 5 as well. I guess if you already are taking a unit that's packing loads of liquefier guns, then it could be okay. Again, as before though, I still think it's questionable to pass up those excellent grotesque cleavers. For 1 CP, we have Protect the Great One. If an enemy unit wounds a homunculus model... Then until the end of your next turn, all of your core units get to re-roll hits and wounds against that target. Again, it's another one that involves putting a homunculus on the front lines and getting them damaged, but if your opponent does attack the homunculus with the wrong unit, then this could be pretty devastating. Maybe you could charge in a homunculus with that transfuser of excruciation, apply the minus one ballistic skill, weapon skill and strength debuff to a unit, then hopefully if they at least chip some damage off him, then that unit just got very, very easy to engage in combat, and a lot easier to kill for all of your core units. Reroll hits and wounds is pretty massive. Throwing a unit of melee grotesques into a unit with that debuff, and they're going to be massively easy to chop to bits. I think that's really quite a powerful stratagem, and I guess if you are playing this army, you might have a fair few homunculi to go around. Potentially even giving up one to use this stratagem could occasionally even be worth it just on its own. Finally, for 1 CP, we have Venoms of Agonising Atrophy. If you wound a non-vehicle unit with a poison weapon, then they get minus one attack. I guess in theory, if you did just want to make an enemy Death Star unit into fairly weedy for a turn, then you could combine this with that brutal vivisection one. And minus one attack and minus one to wound is going to mean that they're not going to be able to get through your tough flesh creations. I'd say not quite as powerful as brutal vivisection, though it could be a nice one-two punch with that one. Overall, I'd say that the stratagems are probably the main advantage of this whole formation. There's really quite a lot of good ones here, 
I like the extra aura on the big homunculus one. Stripping obsec and making enemy units fight very weakly in combat are both very nice. The pop up 4 plus steal no pain is going to be great when it triggers on a meaningful unit, and in particular that protects the great one ability. When that comes into play, that's going to give you a massive amount more damage, and for one command point, that's a really powerful option. Overall, I think this little formation is a really interesting one. I feel like if you were going to build around making it extra nasty, you'd probably want several big units of grotesques and big units of racks. The strengths of this most seem to be in buffing big units of your own stuff and debuffing big scary melee units of your enemy's stuff. Maybe things like big blocks of space marine terminators seem almost like ideal prey for all the debuffs. I suspect it's not going to become suddenly the best way to play Drukhari. I feel like with the trade-offs of the units that you do pass up, there is a fair bit of give and take, but if you were using a massive amount of common stuff already, then it does seem very usable, and some of those stratagems are super powerful. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, I look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas, and anything else that I might have missed that might be really significant in this. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k stuff coming. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspects Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.